Hi guys, welcome to another video. I just want to give you a shot of this out in the sunlight. It is quite beautiful. I tilt it up this way a little bit. Like this. I'm trying to catch it with the sun. There you go. Tilt it back that way. Right there. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. I have a little tiny bit of sunlight left that I'm working with. I'm trying to really capture the beauty of this. There we go. So that is kind of, that's what the whole painting looks like. It has it all through it. Those blingit interference colors mixed in with your regular colors are just mind blowing. Okay, enough ooing and eyeing. Let me show you how this other painting dried from my last video using the Artist Loft pouring medium. I was absolutely shocked. So here she is. If you have been a longtime viewer of mine, you know that I played around with the pre-mixed pouring paints from Artist Loft. And every time that they dried, they had this most beautiful sheen to them. Well, guess what? Their pouring medium by itself has the same sheen. Let me see if I can get this to... Look at that. Do you see that gloss on there? There is no varnish. There is nothing on this painting. That is how the paint dried. So again, just absolutely outstanding. And even though... It dried a little tiny bit darker than the original when it was wet. I absolutely love it. I'm still going to resin it even though it has that shine just because that's a thing of mine. I resin all my paintings. It seals them in. It protects them for a very long time and I just love the way it magnifies. It will magnify these stone looking areas and uh, yeah. So anyway, let's get on with the show. If you're interested in either of these paintings, just email me, artbytammy at yahoo.com. So today I'm stepping way outside of my comfort zone. I've, by the way, my lowly Vefi mats are all drip drying. So that's why you got this ugly <laughs> mustard yellow table. Then you can see my table underneath is totally destroyed. But anyway, it works. So. I am going way outside of the comfort zone. I do not use color palettes like this, but I want to try to do just something different. I can do blue, purple, pink, green all day long, but I got to switch it up a little bit here. So my paints are mixed. Two parts, I'm sorry, three parts, Vivid Enamel, one part Josonia gloss varnish this time. Um... I ordered some of it and I'm going to use it to see if there's any difference. Uh, this is a bloom technique, obviously. And I have here Anthroquinone Blue. I have Van Dyke Brown, Deep Yellow. And then I have three primary elements, which are, this is a Black Orchid, really pretty color. This one here is Desert Clay. So it's like an orangey copper color. And then Spiced Pumpkin, which is an orangey gold. 
So those are the primary elements and I'm going to be using some interference colors. I'm going to use interference gold, also sold by Color Art, the same people that sell um, the primary elements. So it's gonna look white on screen, but what this does is like you saw in the first painting that I showed outside, it gives you those highlights of those luscious colors, the pink, the, the pinks, the blues, not pink, well, it's violet. This one is red. I'm also going to use that. I'm going to use interference violet. And then I'm going to use interference blue. I'm not going to use the green in this one. Okay. I'm trying to stick with shades that I have here. Now, and no, I don't have red, but red will look nice with the black orchid. And so will the violet. This is some color place semi gloss white house paint. This is not your typical pouring recipe. This is for a bloom technique. And I'm pouring on a hexagon. Now, for this paint here, people call it a pillow paint in the bloom recipe technique realm of things but when you're doing a regular acrylic pour and you're using an acrylic white paint mixed with Floetrol or pouring medium like Liquitex pouring medium this is called your base coat okay so again things like the term pillow paint and cell activator those are all terms that belong to the bloom technique so when you hear artists talking that way, it's because they're using this one special recipe. The difference between a bloom recipe and a regular acrylic pouring recipe is with a bloom recipe, you control where your cells are on your canvas. With a regular acrylic pouring recipe, where you're mixing Floetrol into all the colors, they're gonna come out wherever they want to. The Bloom recipe, you're only adding Floetrol to one color that goes in the center. And by the way, you can experiment and try to use any color for your Bloom, for your cell activator. Some will work, some will won't. Some will won't, some won't. You just have to experiment. This blue could work, but the same blue by a different company may not work. It's something that you just have to experiment with. But we know for sure that golden heavy body carbon black works. And we know for sure that Amsterdam white works. Okay. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put down the brown first. And I think I'm gonna pour diagonally through this. I don't think I'm gonna do like a bloom bloom thing. I think I'm gonna do like a mini um, Dutch pour almost kind of. So that's the Van Dyke Brown. If you get big bubbles like that, you want to pop them because they will ruin your design. Okay. So now on top of that, I am going to put in a little bit of interference blue. Just a little bit. Then I'm going to go in with some, let's see, do, 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 do. we'll do yellow. Here's some violet, interference violet. Okay. 
interference gold. Red. Okay. Then I'm going to put in a little more yellow, I think. Now we're going to hit it with some blue. Okay, I know this seems like a very odd color combo, but let's see what happens, right? Uh, here's the desert clay. Spiced pumpkin. and black orchid. Okay. Voila, we're done. <laughs> oh, if only it were that easy. Well, it can be that easy. Just don't know how fun of a painting that is. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go right down the center of that with my Amsterdam white that is mixed with American Floetrol. I put in a tablespoon of paint and approximately four tablespoons of Floetrol. It's a little watery than normal, but I'm okay with that. So right down the center we go. I want to put down enough so I have plenty to blow it forwards and backwards. Okay. So I have my little airbrush out. very pretty extremely pretty Absolutely beautiful. All right. I'm going to let that sit for just a minute so that it has time to come back to the surface. So I'll pause you guys for a second. Give me a close up before I tilt it. Look at all those secondary colors that we got.
I actually like that a lot. Very pretty. And it's sparkling. It's just magic. See, so I didn't use any gold in the painting. You see that gold? Really pretty. Okay, let's tilt, shall we? I almost don't want to tilt. <laughs> Uh, luckily, though, because I spread out that white pillow paint first, I don't have to tilt as much. And that's why I do that. So I want you to think about this. I don't know if you can see this ridge right here. That's all white paint. If you don't tilt enough of this white paint off, your painting is going to crack. That, along with different um, consistencies, that is the number one reason, those are the number top reasons why you get cracking. Consistency and too much paint left on. So, you just take your time. Tilt off what you need to tilt off. And you'll be fine. So I'm just concentrating here, watching where I am tilting, what I am tilting. These paintings that have like primary elements or the uh, interference colors in them, they almost like light up when the light hits them. It's really, really cool. It's like electricity is in your painting. Okay. So I think I'm going to stop there. The only thing is, is this right here, I don't like the fact that this is coming off, but what we could do is this. Let's see if we can add some white paint and get rid of it. There we go. And then maybe we'll add a little more and push this back. Okay. Actually, maybe we'll get rid of all of this here. This way, the top and bottom will look about the same be a little bit of negative space yeah I love it absolutely love it let me give you a close-up I'm happy that I tried out this color palette it's different from anything that I've ever seen on YouTube um, it's just really really beautiful let me give you this lights off view so we'll go forward first And then we'll go backward, backwards. <laughs> that almost looks like a slice of watermelon. 
It's watermelon. Oh, this is just going to be drop dead gorgeous with some resin on it. Yep. So, if you haven't already, would you please subscribe to my channel if you liked the video. Give it a thumbs up. Well, I have like, not thumbs. Um, links to all my social media are below. Uh, my Etsy shop, if you're interested in this or any other painting that you've seen in any of my videos. They're either in there or if I haven't put them in yet, then you can email me artbytammy at yahoo.com. Facebook group, United We Pour with Tammy and Lisa. I am holding a, uh, just started doing monthly challenges in there. If you're looking for a fun place to hang out and to get some help, that is the place to be. Lots of beautiful people in there. And, um... I think that might be it about it. <laughs> oh, April 4th, Agawam, Massachusetts. I will be there teaching a class. If you're interested, email me, artbytammy at yahoo.com. Until the next time, my friends, I hope you have an amazing day and happy pouring.